My name's Julia, and I'm 30 years old. I work at a company that creates designs for printed materials like flyers and catalogs. Despite everything going digital these days, I find my job designing for various businesses incredibly fulfilling. Whenever clients tell me they loved how a design turned out, especially for something like a Christmas event, it really makes my day. You could say this job is my passion, and there was a time I thought it might just be me and my career for life. One day, while I was mulling over this idea, my dad had to be rushed to the hospital because his appendix was acting up. That's where I met James, the kind doctor who greeted me. At that time, he was just another face in the hospital, asking if I was there to visit someone. Little did I know, James would become a huge part of my life, first as my boyfriend and now my fiancé. It's funny how life works, you find the most significant changes in the most unexpected places. Even though I always say my job is my top priority, I caught myself getting super excited about marriage, flipping through wedding magazines the moment the topic comes up. I guess I'm really looking forward to this new chapter. But not everyone seems happy about my happiness. My sister, for instance, has always had this way of looking down on me, and now on James too. It's like the more content I became, the more upset she got. It's strange seeing her face change over time, from the cute sister I once knew to someone who always seems angry. Her attitude made me incredibly frustrated, pushing my patience beyond its limits. This whole situation makes me wonder why people who only know how to belittle others often end up with such bitterness etched on their faces. It's as if their outer appearance begins to reflect the negativity they carry inside. Meanwhile, I'm just here, trying to navigate my way through life, finding joy in my work, and now, in my engagement to James. Life is full of surprises, and I'm learning to embrace them, one day at a time. While I was enjoying a quiet afternoon, sipping tea in our living room and flipping through magazines, an unexpected interruption occurred. My sister, Emily, who is three years my junior, snatched the magazine right out of my hands. To my surprise, it was a bridal magazine I was looking at, and Emily couldn't help but question why I was interested in such a thing. I tried to brush it off, telling her it was none of her business, but Emily always had a way of making everything about her. Emily has always been quite upfront, especially about her dating life, proudly stating she's never been single. She launched into stories about her current boyfriend, even though no one asked. It's been the same ever since we were kids. Emily, with her charming looks, was everyone's favorite. She grew up spoiled, constantly affirmed by our parents and everyone else, which made her believe she was the center of the universe. This attitude led her to look down on me, treating me as if I was beneath her. Don't stand too close. I don't want people to think we're alike. She'd say, or, why bother studying? It's not like you'll get better grades. Her arrogance knew no bounds, constantly flaunting her popularity and assuming I was envious. Even when our parents tried to correct her behavior, it was as if Emily's arrogance was set in stone. She never missed a chance to belittle me, a routine that became the backdrop of our relationship. But one day, I'd had enough. As she went on about her latest boyfriend, I calmly revealed that I, too, had someone in my life. In fact, we were engaged in planning our wedding, which is why I was looking at bridal magazines. Emily was taken aback, skepticism written all over her face. She mocked, doubting anyone could truly appreciate me. But when she questioned what my fiancé could possibly see in me, I confidently responded that he was drawn to my optimism and cheerfulness. Her disbelief only grew, suggesting he must see me more as a caretaker than a partner. Yet, despite her harsh words, I knew the truth of my worth and the genuine love my fiancé and I shared, something Emily's cynicism couldn't tarnish. In my determination to maintain my career post-marriage, I hope to convey to my fiancé that being the perfect housewife wasn't in my plans. This revelation led to an exaggerated response from my sister, Emily, who seemed shocked at the idea of me working after getting married. 
Are you marrying someone without money? She quipped, implying that my future husband must be struggling financially for me to continue working. Her insinuation irritated me, but I clarified that money wasn't the issue. My fiancé James was a doctor with a stable income, I simply wanted to pursue my career. My sister fell silent after my comeback, muttering something under her breath as I walked away, feeling a mix of annoyance and satisfaction. The next step in our marriage preparation was introducing James to my family. The atmosphere was warm and welcoming until Emily made her appearance, dramatically altering the vibe. She complimented James on his looks, canceling her plans to meet him, despite my hope she'd be absent. My history with Emily made me anxious. She had a track record of luring away my boyfriends during our school days. Though we were now adults, and I hadn't dated much since then, her sudden interest in James brought back old fears. However, I tried to convince myself that Emily had grown up and wouldn't attempt anything with my fiancé. Despite my hopes, seeing Emily and James interact with what appeared to be a blush from James filled me with dread, and then my worst nightmare unfolded. James announced he wanted to call off our engagement, having fallen for Emily, who claimed it was inevitable since James found her more attractive. She brazenly justified her actions, stating James had passionately proposed to her, declaring it a crime to be as charming as she was. Next to her James, my now ex fiance laughed off the situation, expressing regret for not realizing sooner how cute my sister was. This turn of events was a harsh reminder of the pattern that seemed destined to repeat itself, no matter how much I hoped it wouldn't. Emily's lack of remorse and James's cavalier attitude left me in a state of shock and heartbreak, showcasing a betrayal I had never anticipated. Realizing the truth about James's feelings and his ease in shifting affections to my sister left me with a profound sense of relief. The moment I saw his insincere smile, any affection I had for him disappeared completely, leaving behind only a feeling of revulsion. I found myself grateful for the breakup, appreciating that I discovered his true nature before we were married. I'm actually relieved I didn't marry someone who could switch his affections so easily. Consider him a parting gift, I told my sister, genuinely content with the outcome. My sister and James mistook my sincerity for bitterness, accusing me of being a sore loser. But it wasn't about losing, it was about recognizing I deserved better. Their inability to see beyond their shallow victory made me realize any further interaction was pointless. Interacting with you is a waste of my time. Goodbye. Their taunts of me being a sore loser followed me out, but their words didn't sting me if anything. They confirmed my decision to move on was the right one. Afterward, our paths never crossed again, partly thanks to our parents, who, outraged by their behavior, cut ties with them. I heard they married, but by then, it no longer mattered to me. Five years later, at 35, I remained dedicated to my career, finding satisfaction in my work. It was during this time that I met Gary, a client who grew to appreciate my works so much that he began requesting me specifically. Our professional relationship gradually became personal, and soon, he was asking me to dinner, and then on a date. Eventually, Gary proposed, and I was genuinely happy. He was sincere and kind a stark contrast to my past experience with James. However, the shadow of my previous engagement lingered, making me cautious. I decided to be honest with Gary, sharing the story of my sister and my ex fiancé even showing him a picture of my sister to gauge his reaction. Gary simply glanced at the photo before turning away with a disinterested look, offering me a reassuring smile instead. I've met plenty of people considered attractive, but none of them moved me. I used to think maybe I'd end up alone because of that. But meeting you changed my mind. It's not about external beauty, it's the inner beauty that matters. And that's what I see in you, Julia, he explained. His words made me pause, surprised and touched. What do you mean? I asked, seeking clarity. Gary smiled. In my line of work, 
I've learned to see beyond appearances. No matter how beautiful or charming someone might be, it's the beauty inside that truly counts. That's what drew me to you. You're the person I've been searching for. Hearing this, I felt a deep sense of relief and validation. Gary's understanding and perspective were exactly what I needed to hear, helping to heal the wounds left by my past experiences. His words reassured me that not everyone would betray trust as my sister and James had, and that genuine connections, based on real appreciation and respect, were possible. During a conversation about work, Gary shared with me how he found my enthusiasm and joy for life truly captivating. He described me as bright and beautiful, saying my happiness was evident and that it made me shine. I couldn't help but feel embarrassed by his words, telling him to stop because it was just too much for me. But Gary, undeterred, continued to express his admiration, insisting that I was more charming and beautiful than anyone else he'd ever met. He was sincere in his desire for us to start dating with the intention of marriage. Despite my protests that it was too embarrassing, his compliments didn't cease, even after we agreed to date. Eventually, Gary and I got married, and our life together has been wonderful. We've grown even closer than before, sharing household responsibilities and enjoying our time together, especially on days off when we'd explore new places or check out furniture for our home. One day, while looking at furniture, I encountered someone from my past, my sister Emily, accompanied by my ex fiance James. Emily's appearance had changed. Her features seemed more severe, perhaps a reflection of her age or the deepening of her personality. James, who was smirking beside her, looked like he had lost some weight. Their presence was unexpected, and Emily's voice was unmistakable as she remarked on my appearance, insinuating that I looked plain. Their condescending attitude hadn't changed, with Emily implying that the store's upscale and imported furniture wasn't meant for people like me. James echoed her sentiments, suggesting my presence might lower the store's reputation and hinted it was best if I left to avoid any confusion about their financial status. This encounter was a stark reminder of the past, but it also highlighted the stark contrast between my current, fulfilling life with Gary and the superficiality I had left behind. Despite their attempt to belittle me, I found their attitudes more pitiful than hurtful, knowing the depth of love and respect in my own marriage was something they could not understand or diminish. The harsh and condescending words from my sister and her husband were trying, but I knew engaging with them was pointless. Their loud critiques about my supposed financial status began drawing unwanted attention from others in the store. Frustrated and ready to leave, I tried to pull my husband, Gary, away, but he stood firm, catching the notice of my sister and her husband for the first time. Who's this? My sister demanded, surprised to learn that Gary was my husband. Her reaction was a mix of shock and mockery, questioning why he would marry someone playing like me and jokingly asking if he was in need of a maid. She bragged about her comfortable life, dining out frequently and hiring housekeeping, implying that Gary and I were less fortunate for needing to work. My sister's patronizing tone and her extension of her sentences in a particularly annoying manner only fueled my frustration. She gloated over stealing my previous fiancé, suggesting Gary and I were doomed to a life of hardship and mocking us for being a perfect match in her eyes. The insults towards me were bearable, but the moment she disparaged my husband, my patience snapped. I was ready to confront her, but Gary calmly stepped in front of me, introducing himself as my husband. Despite their dismissive reaction to his name, Gary remained polite and even offered his business card to James. This gesture seemed to momentarily pause the conversation as James glanced at the card, but my sister's attitude remained unchanged, continuing to belittle me as if it were a truth universally acknowledged. In this moment, Gary's composure and the dignified way he handled the situation made me realize the stark contrast between the shallow, materialistic values my sister held and the genuine, respectful love and partnership 
I shared with Gary. His calmness in the face of their provocation underscored the strength and depth of our relationship, highlighting that true value lies not in outward appearances or material wealth, but in character and integrity. Gary, always the picture of politeness, didn't shy away from confronting my sister's rudeness with a cunning clarity. To judge someone as ugly based on looks alone is shallow. But if we're talking about ugliness, your stems from within, from a personality that delights in belittling others, he said calmly, his words slicing through the air with precision. My sister, so often unflappable in her self-assuredness, found herself blushing deeply, outraged at the suggestion she might be the one at fault. Ugly? Me? How so? She sputtered, genuinely thrown off by the accusation. A truly beautiful person doesn't feel the need to overshadow or harm their sibling. Could it be that your actions towards Julia stem from jealousy, from a desire to surpass someone you actually admire? Gary proposed, unsettling her further. The thought had never crossed my mind that my sister's constant competitiveness and cruelty could be rooted in anything other than disdain. But seeing her reaction, I couldn't help but reconsider the dynamics of our relationship. Gary continued, suggesting that envy was the real motive behind my sister's actions. Taking what belongs to someone else isn't just theft, it's a clear sign of envy. It indicates a struggle with self-worth and confidence. A truly confident person wouldn't need to assert their superiority by diminishing others. My sister tried to defend herself against Gary's observations, but her rebuttals grew weaker, her usual bravado fading. It was then that James, pale and noticeably shaken, intervened. He had been quietly observing, flipping the business card Gary had given him back and forth, his unease growing. Suddenly, he grasped my sister, demanding in a troubled voice, What's happening? Who is this man? The business card, a seemingly innocuous piece of paper, had become the catalyst for a shift in the air, prompting questions and revealing the undercurrents of insecurity and rivalry that had long defined my sister's actions. It was a moment of revelation, showing that beneath the surface of her confident exterior lay a complex web of emotions, and perhaps a begrudging respect for me that she herself had not fully acknowledged. I remembered the name sounded familiar, so I did a bit of digging, and then it clicked, Gary Henry. So, what about it? My sister asked, confused. That's the name of the hospital I work at, I said, a realization dawning on her face. A hospital, she echoed, still not putting the pieces together. Yes, Henry Medical Association, I clarified, watching her face change as she connected the dots. He's Dr. Henry's son, the director and head of the hospital, she stammered, disbelief in her tone. She tried to dismiss it as a coincidence, citing the commonality of the surname. But I knew for sure. I've seen him at the hospital with the director. I didn't recognize him at first because I only saw him from afar, but now it's clear, I admitted. My sister speculated that Gary must be a doctor too, given his father's profession, but the business card he handed over told a different story. It was then that Gary humbly revealed the truth to my stunned sister and James. Not every doctor's son follows in his footsteps. And this company, he gestured to the business card, is a well-known pharmaceutical company recently passed down to me from my grandfather. My sister was at a loss for words, and James, realizing the gravity of the situation, attempted to sit up straighter, both of them turning pale as the significance of Gary's identity sank in. Gary continued, calmly disclosing how he knew of their past mistreatment towards me, stating that their behavior was far worse than he had imagined. James tried to muster an explanation, his face ashen, but Gary, with a stern look, silenced him. There's no excuse for such behavior. I'll be informing my father of this, Gary warned, leaving James to contemplate the repercussions of his actions. As we turned to leave, James was visibly shaken, and my sister stood frozen, still trying to process the sudden turn of events. Walking away from them, I felt a sense of closure, knowing that the truth had finally come to light, 
and the respect and integrity Gary carried with him had revealed the true character of those who had wronged me. Leaving my sister and her husband behind, I felt a chapter of my life closing. I couldn't help but wonder what became of them after that confrontation. James faced consequences at work for his poor attitude towards colleagues and patients alike. His salary was cut, and he was demoted, leading to a swift exit from the hospital as gossip about his behavior made rounds. Struggling to secure a new position, his life became markedly more difficult. My sister, on the other hand, had always lived beyond her means, relying on James's income which was never enough to satisfy her spending habits. James's financial downturn and subsequent weight loss were a stark testament to their dire situation. Quickly losing interest in him after his demotion, she divorced James, convinced she could easily move on to someone else. However, the reality was far from what she had envisioned. No longer the young, charming girl, her harsher demeanor had become evident, diminishing her appeal and leaving her lamenting her lack of suitors. She sought solace and sympathy from our parents, bemoaning her sudden lack of attention and even envying my life. Hinting at a deep-seated rivalry and admiration she might have felt towards me all along. Despite her cries for help, our parents stood firm, advising her to face the consequences of her actions, leading her into an uncertain future away from our family's support. As for me, distanced from the tumultuous relationship with my sister and her husband, I found solace in a peaceful, fulfilling life with Gary. Together, we looked forward to welcoming a new member to our family, a beacon of hope and joy amidst the remnants of past conflicts. As I caressed my growing belly, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the tranquility and love that surrounded me, a stark contrast to the turmoil that once defined my relationships with those closest to me.